Yes, yes, I do intend on addressing 3D collisions in GameMaker at some point in time. First, I would like to talk about something that has been coming up semi-regularly in the comments of these videos. And that is going to be how you draw a GUI in HD and overlay in 3D in GameMaker. If you're doing a 2D game, it would be fairly simple. I think I've talked about that already. Uh, you can use either the draw GUI event, or you can go and um, just use the regular draw event with, uh, with view X view and view Y view for the upper right corner. Upper left corner, you're going to hear me doing that a lot. Um, but if you're doing a 3D game in GameMaker, uh, drawing the overlay is going to be a little bit more challenging. Not a lot more challenging, mind you, just uh, there's going to be a few extra steps. Um, first, I have here, open, I'm going to make this uh, text size a little bit bigger, because uh, I feel like it's easier to read when it's bigger on a YouTube video. Alright, anyway, I've organized this a little bit better than it was organized in the last video that I made on this. Uh, so first, uh, you're setting the color, the light, the fog, everything. Uh, second, drawing the game world, the, the ellipsoid, that's basically the sky, uh, the floor. And third, you're drawing and transforming the, uh, the clock tower model. That's easy enough. Um, the easiest way to draw an overlay in 3D in Game Maker is going to be by drawing the draw GUI event. Um, not unlike you would be using if you were drawing a 2D game. Uh, if you're using Game Maker Studio, you won't have... If you're using GameMaker 8, rather, you won't have access to the Draw GUI event. If you're using GameMaker Studio or GameMaker Studio 2, you will. If you're using old versions of GameMaker, or if you just prefer to draw the, the overlay in uh, an alternative way, uh, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But first, draw set set color. It's only a few minutes into the video, and I already can't spell. See white, and draw text. And we're going to go to the upper right corner. I did it again, the upper left corner. And let's draw the camera's uh, X and Y position. Okay, so at position 32 and 32 on the screen, we're going to be drawing the camera's X and the camera's Y. So let's go and run the game again. Wow, this computer is slow. Anyway, you can now see that if I were to look over a, a light surface, such as this clock tower, uh, the game is indeed drawing the camera's X and Y position at 32, 32 in the screen. Um, unfortunately, even though I, uh, I quite clearly defined the draw color to be white, it's now drawing black. And the reason for that, if GameMaker ever decides to actually start responding again. Alright, that was admittedly a little scary. Uh, the reason that the text is drawing black on the screen instead of white would be because I have defined the light and the fog. And now even though I'm drawing in 2D on the draw GUI event, the light and fog is still active. And basically what happens when you have fog enabled while you're trying to draw in 2D in GameMaker, whether that's a transformed sprite in the 3D world or a 2D overlay like I'm doing now, um, it's just going to draw black. GameMaker veterans might get a wee bit upset at me for explaining it like this, but it's not going to actually be properly lit or shaded or anything. Uh, so what you can do, uh, it's, it's very simple. You can go and set D3D, set fog, false... Uh, the color start and end doesn't really matter, so I'm going to say uh, color can be, what's the color? C, white, like everything else. Uh, start can be 1, end can be 2. Again, it doesn't matter. And D3D set lighting. And it's going to be disabled. And now when I run the game, and I hope it launches a little bit more quickly than it did the last time. Alright, much better. Now when you're in the game... Uh, you can see the text now, instead of being black, it's white like it's supposed to be. And if you were to say draw set color uh, color red, or color blue, or color orange, or anything else, the text would be drawn red, or blue, or orange, or whatever other color that you uh, specify. Now you can use this to draw sprites, you can use this to draw backgrounds, you can use this to draw graphics, you can use this to draw pretty much anything that you want. And the game maker is going to go and freeze again. I don't really have any graphics that I can use in a, as an example, and I don't really have anything more important to draw than the camera's XY position. So I'm going to trust everybody who is still watching this video is able to figure out how to draw their player's health or magic points or whatever else you want to draw on the screen. Instead, uh, the alternative to using the draw GUI event that I mentioned, if you were to go in, what is this? This is the world's draw event, which is what I want. Um, after you finish drawing everything in the game world. So in my case, that's just going to be the sky, the floor, and the uh, the clock tower. So I'm going to say finish drawing in 3D. Uh, you could say D3D set projection ortho. And this is going to set the orthogonal projection. This is going to set the projection to be orthogonal. I'm sorry, linguist. The X and Y, 
I'll explain the parameters in a minute, but the x and y that it is looking for is going to be 0, 0. Width and height is just going to be, in my case, the width and height of the screen, which I believe is, uh, what? Window get width. Width is the safest way to, uh, to obtain that value. Um, window get height. And the angle, this is just quite simply the angle that you are rotating the screen. You could draw the overlay upside down if you wanted to, or rotate it at a 90 degree angle. I don't know why you would want to, but it's still an option. And now after this, you're basically undoing what you did in the camera's draw event. This is the first thing that fires when the game draws the, uh, when Game Maker draws the, uh, the game world. You're basically undoing the set projection in 3D and uh, reverting it back to a normal projection, like you would in a 2D game. So instead, I'm going to take all this code out of the draw GUI event, do a lovely cut and paste, and it's going to be doing the exact same thing. There we go, the game launched much faster than I did the, uh, the last couple times, I have to say, that's pretty nice. It is nothing fancy, but you can see the camera's XY position on the screen. If I were to move around, uh, the, uh, the coordinates up there would be updated appropriately. And if for whatever reason uh, you want to avoid the draw GUI event, or if you're using an older version of Game Maker, this is pretty much what you would have to do to draw an overlay. Now, I said I would talk about the parameters that I passed to D3D set projection orthogonal uh, real quick. 0, 0 for the x and y, and the window width and window height for width and height, and 0 for the angle are pretty much all that you would ever want to actually use under normal circumstances. Um, if, for example, I were to say negative 100, negative 100 for the x and y, uh, you would see that instead of drawing the text in the upper right corner of this, wow, the upper left corner of the screen, I will be drawing the text closer to the middle of the screen, offset by about 100 pixels. So if for, for whatever reason you wanted to shift the uh, you wanted to shift the overlay around slightly, you could play with the x y value in D through D set projection orthogonal and see what you get. Likewise, if I were to change these two values to something, say, uh, let's actually switch this back to zero zero, so it'll be easier to see. Um, how about the width can be, and I'm going to actually try and choose these values a little bit carefully. Uh, the width can be tw uh, 128, and the height can be 64. And now, instead of drawing the text scaled 1 to 1, like you would expect it to be, it's going to be blown up to pretty, actually, ridiculous looking proportions. Yeah, this doesn't look very good at all. So anyway, imagine that these four arguments form a rectangle. I'm going to go and switch these back to uh, what they were originally, uh, the window width and height. Imagine that these four arguments form a rectangle, and and then everything, all the text, all the pictures, all the graphics that you might want are drawn onto that rectangle, and the rectangle is stretched to fill the game window. And that is why, in almost all cases, you want uh, D3D set projection orthogonal to be 0, 0 to window width and window height. And just for fun, how about... Let's rotate the, uh, the view at a 20 degree angle. And I can't really think of any situation where this would come in handy, but as you can see, uh, the text is there. It's just being rotated at a 20 degree angle and it's flowing off the screen. So that's how D3D set projection orthogonal works. Again, if you're using Game Maker Studio, whether you use this method or the draw GUI method, it's up to you. If you're using Game Maker 8 or previous versions, uh, you have to use this method because there is no draw GUI method. And that is your introduction to the marvelous world of game overlays and Game Maker in 3D. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, as long as you remember to turn off lighting and fog. As always, if you've been following this along and you want to download this code, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can do just that. My name is Dragonite, I hope you found that informative, and I will see you all later.